everybody, welcome back to DJ Tutorials. This is going to be part two of the Fantasy Ring Design series. And hopefully you have done the first part before starting this one. If you haven't yet, go back and check that one out. And if you do have any questions, of course, feel free to join our Discord server if you get lost or confused or anything. Or you can also put a comment below. The link to the Discord is going to be down below in the video description. So here's our project from last time. As you can see, it looks pretty cool already, but we're going to make some new stuff here, some details. We're going to add a little bit of a sort of artistic detail that's going to go behind our gem here, and it's going to basically fill in this space that's sort of blank at the moment. And everyone's going to have pretty much a unique little artistic design there, and I will show you how to do that right now. So let's take the band here, and let's go into solid mode. We're going to duplicate this, right click to set it back, and we're going to name this, let's call this Art Backdrop. Okay, and you can call this kind of whatever you want, but it's the best name I can think of right now. Let's turn the band off. Let's turn the backing off and the marquee. And what we're left with is this right here. Now for this, we really don't need the subdivision and the bevel. We really just need this right here. Kind of looks a little bit weird. And what we're going to do is we're going to go into edit mode. And we're just going to grab this section right in here. So I just loop selected that. And we're going to duplicate this, right click, hit P, and then separate by selection, okay? And then if we go out of edit mode, we can take this art backdrop here and we could just kind of delete that for the moment. And what we're left with is this right here. And what we're gonna do next, we're just going to hit, uh, actually let's hit N, go up to item, make sure you have this open up here. And we're just gonna take these bevel weights and creases off because we really don't need that. We're gonna hit E to extrude, Z to lock it on Z and then just pull it down so that it all connects in the very center, just like this. Next thing that we'll do here is we will right click and we will select smooth vertices like this, okay? And all we really need to do is down here, you'll see where it says repeat, just click this a couple times. Really, we just want it to be a little bit more smooth right in the middle there and that's really all we want. And just to make sure that nothing weird is happening, let's hit A, hit M to merge any sort of doubled up vertices and merge by distance, okay? And that's gonna leave us with that. I'm in object mode now. I'm gonna shade this smooth just so we can see if it looks pretty smooth and it does, so that's just fine. For the next part here, I want you to kind of watch what I do first and get the idea about what I'm doing and it'll make a lot more sense, okay? So I'm just gonna separate my panels here and over here on the right, I'm going to open up the band and the marquee so we can kind of see what that looks like. Okay, it looks like this. And on this side over here, I'm going to have the art backdrop selected and I'm gonna hit forward slash. And you can see that now it's isolated by itself, okay? And I'm just going to move this on Y back a little bit like this. And let's actually turn the backing on. And what I want to do is I want to set it so that it's a little bit further back from the backing here. And what we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to scale this up a little bit so that it isn't kind of like you can see here, it's a little bit weird right in here. So it's kind of missing that section. So what we're going to do here is we're going to apply the mirror. We're going to go into the edit mode here and we're just going to scale this up a bit like this. And that should work out just fine. So there we go. Really what we're doing, we don't really need this mesh for anything else other than a background to kind of like draw on, okay? And that's kind of why I'm leaving this open. It does leave me less space to work, but I wanna show you what's going to happen here when we start drawing. So there it is right there. Now on this side of the panel, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a curve, a bezier, make sure that you're in object mode when you do that. And we're gonna call this artwork, or you can call this detail or whatever it is that you wanna call it. Call it whatever you want. And we're actually going to go into edit mode here. And you can see there's our, if we zoom in here with numpad, uh, the period on the numpad with this selected, we can see that the curve is right here, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to delete these vertices. And what we're going to do instead of using any sort of other way of doing curves, we're going to draw the curve on using this tool right here. So make sure that you have your toolbar open with T click on your drawing tool. And then I'm just over here going to minimize this, move this over a little bit. 
and then move this over. And what we have here, if we go to the tools, if we hit N, go to tools, you can see that we have some tools here or some items that we can change with our tool. And we want to keep this Bezier. We'll leave this to refit right now. We'll put the tolerance, let's put this to like a three or something. We're going to remove detect corners. And we're actually going to add a taper to begin with here. We're going to put taper start to one and taper end to one. And what we're going to do is we're going to change this here from depth cursor to surface. And we're just going to start drawing on this object right here. Now, what we're going to want to do is make sure that what we end up with is something that's going to be mirrored from the left side to the right side, and then also from the top to the bottom. And again, hopefully you're watching me because this might not make a lot of sense until we do that particular step. So I'm gonna just give myself a lot more room here and I'm using a mouse. It probably would be better if I had a tablet or something like that, but a mouse works just fine here. So if we just start drawing and I'm just gonna do a sort of like squiggly pattern and some of them can be uh, sort of like on top of each other and we can go over a little bit onto the what would be a mirrored side and I'm going to have it be something kind of like this and I'm just going to come back around this way just to show you what it looks like when it's mirrored on all these other sides okay so there's our curve now it doesn't really seem like much right now but that is because it is not kind of made with any depth at the moment. So what we need to do is, <laughs> we're getting a little bit uh, small here regarding my uh, workspace, but if we go over here to the curve properties and go to geometry, and if we click and drag the extrude function right here, right there, you can see that now we have some geometry that's starting to take shape. And if we turn off the backing, and over on the right side, if I turn off the overlays, you can see that now there is a sort of squiggly design that's coming through. And you can see that there's thinner parts and there's thicker parts. And that's because we set these tapers right here. And if we wanted it to not be that taper, we'd have to sort of redraw it with these taper values set a little bit different. But as far as demonstration purposes, this is fine as it is. And uh, for you all, if you have a tablet, you can use this pressure one here to help out with uh, making bigger and smaller tapers as well. But you can see here that we have a pretty cool little uh, design that's sort of taking shape. And if we take the bevel down here and we increase the depth of the bevel, it's now creating a thickness to the whole thing as well. And if we then, after we set some of those properties, we add a mirror modifier to go from the left to the right, and from top to bottom, using the X and Y here, you can see that now we have our design is a little bit more interesting. And it's mirrored. And if we just kind of look at it from this perspective, you can see that we have a pretty cool design without really doing much. And some of it's not visible because it's behind the marquee diamond cut thing, but, you know, it is there. So there is some of that there. So when you're drawing this, and that's why I wanted to show you what it looked like on this side, maybe just pay more attention to some of the area in here rather than the area that's not really going to be seen. But now you can see what it looks like. So when you do your drawing, which you should be doing uh, just in a moment here, you can make a really cool design that will be interesting and look unique and cool to you. So go ahead and take a moment to do that. And I will show you what mine looks like in just a moment. So here's what I decided to do with mine. And basically what I did was I first basically started to sort of draw a shape. And I'm just going to show you on this area right here. And I'm going to turn off the mirror at the moment. Um, I basically drew a sort of like a, a swirly shape like this, something like that. And then I wanted to just sort of do some cool like lines that sort of kind of went over the top. and. You might have noticed when you were doing this that if you had a curve down and you stopped drawing and then you drew a curve over the top like this, you might have noticed that it sort of folds over the top like that. And you can use that to your advantage. So that's what I did in with this line that kind of goes across like this over the top here. 
And you could also just kind of take that and just like move it. Like if you take those that curve, you select it all, and then you just grab it on X or something, and you move it around. You could do that too. Um, but basically, I did something like that. And then when I wanted to just add a little bit more, what I did was if I select this curve here, this curve here, and hit Control Plus to just grab all of those particular curves and hit H to hide them. Whoops, looks like I didn't grab this one here. So if I grab this one here, hit H to hide it, you can then, with the Draw tool selected again, you can add more over the back of it. So that's basically what I did. I did something kind of like that, and that's why I ended up with this design that, let's hit Alt-H here, and I'm just going to delete all of this that is up here and turn back on the mirror, and you can see that's basically what created this design like this. And since we're going to be making a Boolean, um, this is a good idea to sort of like leave this area kind of untouched because we're going to delete some of that stuff anyway to make it easier to render. And I'll show you what I mean in just a moment here. So let's go ahead and save our project file and we can actually move this art backdrop here. We can hit M and move it to a save collection, which is basically going to be a place that we keep this stuff uh, until we might need it again or whatever, just to hold on to it in case we need it, okay? But we can just turn them all off at the same time. So let's turn that off. And I'm actually gonna take this Bezier circle and I'm gonna move that into the save as well. And let's join these two views together, hit forward slash, and that's basically what the design looks like. Now what's really cool is I can take this and I can apply this temporary material that I talked about in the last video. And if we look at this in the material preview, we can see it looks pretty cool. There's a really neat effect going on here. The problem is that if we actually look at this in wireframe, some of the metal is bleeding through into our gemstone here. And since I'm going to be showing you guys how to render this in cycles, I'm gonna change it to cycles. If I go to the rendered view and then I go up here and I turn off the scene lights in the scene world, we can just look at the pre-made HDRI lighting. And you can see in, on the inside of our gemstone, that's not a reflection of this. That's the metal bleeding through into our gemstone. Okay, so that's a problem. So the next thing that we're going to do here is we're going to create a Boolean to remove some of this stuff here. We are going to duplicate the backing, shift D right click to set it back where it was and change this to, let's say artwork Boolean, like that. And then we're gonna take the artwork and the artwork Boolean forward slash on the numpad so we can just look at these together. And what we'll do with the artwork Boolean, since we really don't need it to have all this subdivision and stuff, we're going to remove the subdivision, the solidify and the bevel. And what we'll do is go into edit mode so tab to go to edit, I hit two to grab the edges here and I selected this loop cut with alt left click and then hit F for face, okay? And then on the back here, we're gonna select this loop cut as well, hit F for face and we're going to hit A to select all and just to make sure all our normals are calculated correctly, go to mesh, normals and recalculate outside just to make sure that everything is set correctly. Now let's save. And then let's take our artwork here and we're going to name this instead of artwork, we're gonna name this artwork curves so that we know that this is curves. And what we'll wanna do is just keep saving parts of our project as we start deleting things and changing things because if we start doing destructive stuff and you're not saving enough, you might wanna go back and if you don't have anything to go back to, it's gonna really make you upset. So we're going to call this artwork curves and let's duplicate this, Shift D to duplicate, right click to set it back where it was. And we're just gonna hide the artwork curves right now and just have the artwork curve 001 and name this artwork mesh. And what we'll do here is we'll remove the mirror because we don't need that right this moment. So let's remove the mirror for now. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna convert this into a mesh. But before you do, I just wanna warn you of a couple things. So currently I have the curve settings here set to resolution is 12 see that and we have the geometry here and then we have the bevel and you can see that the resolution is set to four and the depth is set to you know something like this okay now you can change the resolution you can remove some of this just make the bevel one 
make it just two or something. And the reason why I'm showing you that is that the next step when we start to make a Boolean out of this, it can be very, very slow um, if you have a very high detailed mesh. So since we're gonna be pretty far away from this thing, we really don't need that much detail. You kind of want enough to make it to where it doesn't look so jaggedy like this. And how we're gonna fix that is just adding maybe a couple subdivisions here to the resolution preview thing. And when we do that, it sort of deals with that. And if we're really far away, you know, if we remove these or add some of these, it doesn't really show too much, but I'm going to leave mine at 22 and I'm going to have the bevel set to a two. And there's a couple more things that we can do to this curve to make it a little bit more interesting, but I'm going to save that for later. So if you want to uh, see those now, you can go to this time code that I'm putting up on the screen right now and just take a look at some of those sort of like tips and tricks on how to adjust your curve properties. But I'm going to keep this kind of more simple so that you guys can move forward with this particular part of the project. So let's right click and then we're going to convert to mesh. Now that it's a mesh, if we go into edit mode, you can see that we have all this right here. And what you can do is go and select the vertices and let's actually turn off the normals. We don't need to see that right now. We can select all of these, hit M and then merge by distance, which will remove a whole bunch of doubled vertices, which might help with our overall calculation with the Boolean and with the calculation of our render. So let's save because sometimes this next part can be a little bit annoying and frustrating for people to do Booleans. So let's take this, go to our modifiers, and we're just gonna do this old school. We're gonna add a Boolean like this, take the little pipette here or eyedropper and select our Boolean. And this might take a moment, so, you know, if you have a slower computer, that's okay. You should be able to do this just fine. So now that we have that Boolean on there, you can see that we have these settings here. So we have exact, we have fast, we have self-intersect and hole tolerant. Click on hole tolerant. And that basically tells it there's a hole here. So cut that section out and make that right. So that is how you do that. And what we'll do here, we're, at, we're just going to apply this Boolean. But before we apply the Boolean, we're gonna save our file because it will have to recalculate. So save your file, then we're just going to apply that Boolean. So some people will say not to apply the Boolean, but this is a pretty easy thing to do. So if we ever need to do it again, we can just come back and do it and it's really no big deal. So we're gonna take this artwork Boolean here and we're gonna put that into the save. We're gonna take the artwork curves and we're gonna put that into the save. And there we have our cut artwork. Looks a little bit weird right here, but that's okay because it's going to be covered up. So let's get out of the isolated view here and let's put back on our mirror modifier. And you can see that now we have a cutout detailed artistic section that's put right there behind. And if we look at this in the rendered view, look how neat that is. Very, very cool. So we're gonna take a look at some of these curves here and how to make a more interesting or you know some more kind of like unique shapes. So I'm gonna turn off the mirror modifier just for the moment. And you can see over here on the right that I'm going to try to have this set in a way where you can see what's happening with the mesh itself. And then over here, we're going to turn this on solid view and I will just kind of show you some things. So. One thing that you can do is if you select on a curve, a, a, any of these vertex points here, and you hit Control Plus, you can grab all of that curve. If you just keep hitting Control Plus, you can basically grab all of that. And then we can grab it on Y, for example, and just like move it into another area so they're not quite all overlapped on top of each other. So if you look over here, you can see that it's now separated instead of right on top of each other. And the other thing that we can do here is you can grab some of these sections and you can pull them around. So, you know, you can make more unique design by doing that if you'd like. Or what we can even do is change the orientation that our extrusion went. So you can see here that we have an extrusion that kind of goes up and down. And if I go here to the properties and I go to the geometry and we take the extrude, you can see how that gets fatter and smaller and all that kind of stuff, right? So. If I take this and we go to this right here that says tilt, we can left click and drag on this and then we can move the angle that the curve is actually tilted. So you can see there, I now have a different shaping. It's more sort of like, you know, 
front and back instead of up and down, which is what this one did right here. And let's say that I like that on this back one here, but I want the other ones like, you know, this line right here, I wanna change the orientation there. I can then grab all of those, I can take the tilt again and just adjust that as I want. And you can see that if I look at it over here, you can see there the tilt is being adjusted. And likewise, we can take the radius here and you can use that to change the shaping of these as well. So you can actually grab a certain point and we can increase the radius there. And you can see that looks kind of weird and kind of funky, but you can also get the proportional editing up here and you can do the same thing. So you can see I'm proportionally changing the overall radius just like that with proportional editing. But if you don't want to grab, you know, all this other stuff that's back here, you just want to grab it on that line, you can go up here and then change this to connected only, and then it will only grab the connected section like this. So you can grab that and increase that size there. We can grab this one here and we can increase this sizing right here with the proportional editing. And if you middle mouse wheel up and down, you can actually adjust the size of the area that's being affected, even though we don't see the... Uh, the outline of the proportional editing thing, it is there somewhere, uh, it's just not quite visible. So middle mouse wheel up and down will change the area that is being affected by that. So that's pretty much how you can do that. Now, if you don't like the overall sort of like uh, shaping that the curves have done, you can select them all and you can right click, change the handle type to automatic which will sort of change these all to be sort of a little bit smoother. And you could just grab them all and scale them all together, or you can scale them independently. But that's how you can kind of like smooth out some of the shaping there. And if we right click, we can even go and click on this right here that says recalculate handles. And sometimes that can solve some of the issues that's going on if you've changed some of the handle types and, and the uh, angles and the orientation and all that. So. So that's going to be it for this tutorial. Hopefully you learned something really cool on how to make these details and you can add them to all kinds of parts of your object, like over the top of your ring mesh or anything like that, if you feel like doing so. I know this may be a little bit shorter, but I really wanted to make sure that everybody had some time to create some really fun, unique art details behind the gem before working on the next part of the series. Thank you so much to all of you for watching and thank you so much to the Patreon community who support the channel. You all keep me motivated to keep creating work just like this here and I will see you all next time on DJ Tutorials.